Hi, I'm Shin Rob Jira, and today, uninspired Sonic the Hedgehog joke because blue. Yep, today we're talking about the latest Godzilla Store exclusive figure release from Bandai, so let's just get started. The Godzilla 2000 Heat Radiation Repaint is an exclusive to the Godzilla store in Osaka. This is one of the opening day special items that you could snag. I mean, technically you could still snag it, but you know. And to start your exclusive run with something as cool as this, that's pretty awesome. And for the most part, I have nothing but really positive things to say about it. But before I get into that and long-winded close-ups, Let's take a look at this here paperwork. First off, we have this little mini poster or pamphlet talking about the Godzilla Interception Operation Awashi. This is uh, that little museum theater thing that you can uh, zip line into Godzilla's mouth. You got the little short film with Shin Godzilla, the pre-theater, the little shooting gimmick that you can do, and you know, the museum where they're showing off stuff from Godzilla Tokyo SOS, it appears. Very, very nice. There's a bit of a read up going on over here, a little bit of a map and tell you how to get there, where to get there, and other ways to get there. Here we have another pamphlet that features the Godzilla store Osaka art that was unveiled on Twitter not too long ago. Very, very nice. This also acts as a pamphlet with the Godzilla store Tokyo Shin Godzilla art print on the front. If anybody reads manga, you know what I'm talking about here by that being the front. And right here, you can see that this figure that we are talking about today is exclusive to the Osaka store and the website, whereas Kiryu over there was exclusive to Tokyo and the website. So close that up. I am probably going to be hanging it up this way on the back technically. And over here we have, I guess, somewhat of a bigger vert. Nah, maybe not a bigger. Well, you know what? They're both here. Yes, <laughs> definitely a bigger version. As you can see, this is more so like a newspaper clipping, kind of, which I really, really like. And this is also something I'd really like to hang up for the uh, Godzilla Interception Operation Awaji. Awashi? Awaji? I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. And on the back, we have an image of the Shin Godzilla statue you can zip line into. We got a whole bunch of reading to do, blah, 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 blah. Very nice little inclusions for the Godzilla store to include with this order. Very much appreciated. Now, let's talk about the figure. Now, when it comes to this figure's incarnation origin, it really kind of is all over the place. Mm. Gojira Man 2005 on Instagram said that it could be a representation of what Godzilla looked like in the Hello. little pachinko thing. And looking at the footage, this version of Godzilla did have the blue atomic breath, but he kind of wasn't all shiny and everything. I myself thought this repaint was trying to encapsulate the look and feel of the Noriyoshi poster for Godzilla vs. Mechagirus. But as we look at the tag, it is very much a Godzilla 2000 tag. And if you had any doubts, there it is on the opposite side. Godzilla 2000 Millennium just blued out. I'm sure this is just a blue version of the Bandai Movie Monsters series Godzilla 2000 tag. Don't have that figure. Not yet. But yeah, Godzilla 2000, not Godzilla vs. Mechagirus, not Godzilla. Technically, Godzilla vs. Mechagirus is technically Godzilla 2000, but we're not going to get into specifics here. So we're just going to jump straight on in and look at that. Just, just, just look at that. I love how every raised piece of skin and a little bit of the smoother skin too, obviously, is just coated in this very gunmetal gray silver look it's very very nice and it really does show just how much detail goes into these figures sometimes they're not properly represented when it comes to paint so to see something extra painted like this is just very very nice of course it wouldn't be a bandai release without some spotty painting here and there where the paint really didn't set the best or really wasn't evenly applied and that is going to be something you run into on this figure the paint can be very heavy handed in some areas and very light handed in others but it's one of those paint effects where it look kind of looks cool either way one area personally that i think it doesn't really look very cool on is uh over here on the lower jaw that just looks like they just dabbed the crap out of godzilla's lower jaw like ah! It's like, okay, there you go, you're painted! Meanwhile, on the other side, it's perfectly even and distributed nicely. Let's take a look at the bottom of the jaw! See what I'm saying? Big smudge on the left, perfect on the right. That's just weird. So this guy doesn't fully suffer from heavy paint abs curio syndrome. This is present in the promo images, it is, so this isn't random, but this whole portion of Godzilla's chest over here just remains completely unpainted. And to prove 
that this was in the promo picture, you can see right here that the chest is untouched by this and most and part of the crotch too. So basically, I don't know what the initial reasoning behind all of this is, but if this really is a heat radiation version, maybe this is all blank just because his atomic breath would be coming out here and his uh, lower jaw would kind of be blocking that area out a bit. But as I said, he doesn't suffer from heavy paint apps Kiryu syndrome because the opposite sides of the arms and even a little bit of the hands are going to be painted in this silver dry brush. I believe that's the proper term for it. Taking a look at the legs and the feet, you can see that even the legs are decked out on both sides, mind you. So they really did go all out with this dry brush, this wash of just silver. Looks really, really nice. And even on the top of the feet, you're going to get some of that fantastic silver. Just look at that. And the toes are painted fairly nicely too. And as you can see by looking at Godzilla from this angle, the bottom of the tail is entirely painted in that silver too. A little bit heavier in some areas than others, but even the tail over here, it's very, very nice. From the base on both sides to the tip on both sides, you're going to get that lovely wash less dry brushing. I really need to learn the phrases here. You know, I really don't mind the lacquer of blue on the tail just because of the silver that's taking its place, but right over here, it's like Bandai. You could smidge more, Yugi. Like you were doing better on the other side, but you could do a little bit. <laughs> I'm really not that upset about it. Just to show this portion of the figure off, between and below the dorsal fins over here, uh, the back is not painted in the silver, and the blue dorsal fins are only painted on one side. Yes, you heard that right. Bandai couldn't be fucked to paint their dorsal fins on their exclusive figures on both sides. They just did the one side. The back, I'm really not upset about that not having silver on it. It's essentially a separate piece, too, so I was like, eh, I don't know. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, point that out. It's just like the back of the figure, like over here, of course, you're going to get all that silver. It's just in between the dorsal fins, you will not. Speaking of the dorsal fins, they truly do look fantastic. The detail is pretty good. Uh, the outsider over here is a little muddy. Like, you can tell that they were kind of going for, like, a layered look over here. The original versions did that. Like, the original version of Godzilla 2000 from Bandai did that, but I feel like they just did it a little bit better. And in saying that they did it a little bit better, I feel like the dorsal fins lost a little bit of detail with this new mold for Godzilla 2000. I guess I can talk about that more in length whenever I finally get the Godzilla 2000 Bandai. Bandai Movie Monsters reissue in, but as we can see here with Papa Classic, the dorsal fins just have a whole bunch more going on for them, especially towards the root of them all, and the ones in the back just look better detailed and better integrated into the sculpt. Whereas these over here kind of get lost in the dorsal fins that are in front of them and look kind of yogurty, and they're properly detailed over here, so I, I don't know. For the most part, the dorsal fins look mostly the same. I feel like these look a little bit more angular than these do in some areas at least. But anyway, my main point here is that the dorsal fins look fantastic. They look fantastic on both sides and the metallic light blue really does complement the silver on this figure. And like I showed off earlier, you're going to get that at the base of the tail as well. Both sides. And now to talk about the only other place on this figure that's going to have paint the head. All right, to actually talk about the silver first, I think the silver was handled very, very nicely on the head over here. I feel like it was mostly distributed rather evenly on this figure. I really love that a lot of uh, <laughs> brushing over here on the brow going towards the ears was used because it really does just bring out all of that. Look at that. Mm. Oh, beautiful. I'm glad they managed to cover the nose and not the inside of the nose. That's very, very good of you, Bandai. Uh, the only area on the face that I would say is kind of spotty are actually the eyes. Tiny, insignificant little smudges on the eyes. So tiny that not even I can really complain about it. Ooh, that too kind of messy, though. Teeth on the other side are fine. I actually had no idea the entirety of the inner mouth was painted the same color as the tongue. I guess I'm just used to the likes of the classic boy with just the tongue painted one color, not so much the inside of the mouth, but I don't mind this. I think this looks pretty cool and I like that there's actually detail on the inside of the mouth as well, especially on the roof over there. Looks very, very nice. Did I mention that the silver on the neck is a little uneven just in this major area? I don't know if this is going to be an effect on every version of this figure, but it's just an effect on mine and I just wanted to let you all know that. Again, when it comes to the neck onto the chest over here, I really don't care if the silver is spotty because silver was never meant to be over here and this over there, I mean like, 
Could you even notice? Would you have even noticed if I said anything? <laughs> you know what I mean? So when compared to the original Godzilla 2000 release from Bandai, clearly this version is a bit smaller. And that just seems to be the major theme when it comes to the Bandai Movie Monster series of reissues. So if you're upset by this, I have to ask where the heck have you been recently? <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, when it comes to similarities, I think that just mainly comes from the fact that they are the same Godzilla. I mean, the tail is obviously a little bit longer here, and the way that this tail angles out, it almost feels like they cut off this portion of the tail and just molded a new tip for the new version. So again, this is my first time with the Bandai Movie Monster series version of Godzilla 2000. So I'm I'm new to this version of the skull. So that's interesting. It's different. The legs look a little bit more leaned out than the original. The original one had those thick. Curves, man. While the new one, again, a little bit more leaned out. It appears the arms are pretty much in the same position and that we've pretty much got the same amount of teeth. And the only other differences I can really see are the inner mouths and uh, the eye color, because the eye color is mostly that yellow, but these are more brown while these are more red, so there's that. <laughs> I mean, I could get into how this guy's more greener and this guy is silver, but that would absolutely defeat the point because the whole point of this exclusive is that he doesn't look like this Godzilla. So anyway, how about that articulation? Arms can move front to back like so. My copy just so happens to be kind of stiff with it. I think it's just because of the paint that they use, but basically it's your basic Bandai articulation. Um, yeah, this guy actually really is very, very stiff. You're just gonna get the arms and the legs, nothing in the tail. Although I'm pretty sure if you break the glue seal on this thing, it'll work just fine. I just don't like doing that with my figures because knowing me, I'd break them on accident. Just to twist the knife in my own wound, I wanted to compare the backs of these two figures together. And as you can see, this boy over here with the main silver paint on the skin absolutely just outclasses the untouched back of that of heavy paint, heavy arms, carry you. Yes, again, the back of the figure in between all the dorsal fins is not painted silver like the base coat of the skin, but I'd still consider this a major improvement over this because at least here, there appeared to be some semblance of effort made. So would I recommend this figure to Bandai lovers or serious Bandai collectors in general? Personally, Yes, I think the silver skin and the blue dorsal fins absolutely warrant a repurchase. And to be completely honest, this guy does stand out on the shelf, even when being sat next to a theater exclusive. See? Just look at that. I also just wanted to add, out of all the Godzilla store repaints that I have, this Godzilla 2001 is probably one of my more favorite ones. I mean, personally, I like all of these for different reasons, except you. But I don't know, it's nice to have a bit of a wild paint job for a Godzilla 2000 figure. I just wanted to throw that in there, carrying on. And on top of that, I feel Bandai just handled this release very, very well. I'm not the biggest fan of this reissue of Godzilla 2000 from the Bandai Movie Monster series because I feel like, like it lacks a little bit of detail in some places. But for the most part, even in not being the biggest fan of the mold and the sculpt and everything, the silver and the blue just make me really, really like this. And it makes me all the more confident in me purchasing the Godzilla 2000 Bandai Movie Monster series reissue figure. And again, if you have a pretty boring Godzilla 2000 shelf, kind of like I do, this guy is definitely going to light that shelf up a bit. People are going to see the blue spines the silver skin, the blue tag, and think, well, holy crap, that's kind of cool. So yes, an absolute major recommendation from me, definitely over the heavy paint apps, heavy arms, Kiryu. Just be ready for some weird shipping, possibly. Anyway, let's cut back to my face and call it a day, shall we? Oh, he's a lovely release, that's for sure. He definitely fared a lot better than Heavy Paint Abs Kiryu. Even with paint being a little heavier in some areas and a little bit lighter in some areas, I do think this is the superior release of the two. Now, of course, we do have one more, a uh, Shin Meatloaf Jira that's going to be coming out more towards Christmas. Probably won't have a video for that done until afterwards. And since this figure showed up so last minute, I am unfortunately going to delay the NECA Anchorage Attack Gypsy Danger review, but, and I'm doing this for all of you who have been waiting patiently, the next review will be the Kaiju Raijin figure from the Bandai Softy Spirits line, so get ready for that, get ready for more Shin Rob Jira Christmas season, whatever the heck you want to talk about. I will see you all next Friday, or maybe even earlier, because that Raijin figure is pretty basic. Coming from the guy that just made a near 20 plus minute long video on a single Bandai figure. What can I say, I love the sound of my own voice. No, I, I, I really don't, I just get too excited talking about Bandai figures.
All right, before this goes on any longer than it should, patrons, thank you so much for becoming Shinrob GR patrons. I will have the behind the scenes version of this video up hopefully sometime this weekend or Monday at the latest. You can find links to all my social media in the description below, including my red bubble page where you can snag yourself some Shinrob GR merch. Pink, Halloween, Christmas, it's all there. And until next we meet, friends and neighbors, I have been Shinrob Jira. Bye.